I always talk to my students about is about a process of thinking because what instrumental music actually is and what it does and the hardest thing in it is to use the sound of an instrument to create an emotional effect for a listener. And that is an acquired skill. It is not a skill that can be taught. So what I always try to do is I use a very Socratic method when I teach with my students. I want them to identify what's wrong with their plan. I don't want to have to be the person to tell them because then they always think they need to come to me to get it fixed. My idea is to put you in a place where you can identify your problems and you can fix them. And if you can't, then you can come to me. And that's kind of how I see music in, in you know in general it, it's a reflection of what i think uh a lot of times you go to i go to social to, to social media i used to musician sites and everything in it is about music i mean absurd things like what key is giant steps in? i mean what it's in b <laughs> and then they're like no it's really in this it's really in that and then the conversation becomes so nerdy that Almost all of our conversations are interior conversations, which is right. why nobody likes us. It, the old days, <laughs> they understood that you had these two conversations. When you're hanging at the bar with your boys at 4 a.m., you can have an interior conversation. But for audiences, you need to have an exterior conversation. So you mm -hmm. need to find a way to use the music you want to play to, manipul to manipulate audiences, to get them to like it and one way is to play things that they have the capacity to like but if you fancy yourself a genius or an innovator and your 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 strident belief is that the reason jazz is not popular is because the the, the audiences aren't smart enough to dig what we're doing then you're doomed because audiences have been the same and having played classical music and having played popular music and have played secular music and jazz and all these other things, all these audiences to me are the same. Because what they really like are songs with a good melody and a good ass beat. That's what they like. Yeah. And that's never gonna change. I played uh, the, the Ebear Concertino in Orlando. And there's this tricky passage in the thing, you know, where it goes really high and ends up with this chromatic thing with an A, you have to tongue the nose. I, I rarely ever played that thing right. And I played it in Orlando and I played it right and I nailed it. The audience, yay. And then we played some other piece. I think it was a piece by Sally Beamish. It's a beautiful piece in the audience. Then the orchestra played a piece and, and then we played Bolero and we got a standing ovation. Hmm. That's no different than what you would expect at a pop music concert, except they have 11 Boleros a night you know what I mean? So it's like right, soft. right, right, right. But us, we have no boleros. There are boleros versions of that in jazz. We don't play them because we think that jazz is a vehicle for us to present how good we think we are. Mm. The whole thing becomes detached. So people sit there and they watch it and they try to like it, but there's nothing for them to like. So what we do as the band is we try to learn how to play everything stylistically. So that way we can just tailor the show to whatever the audience is. And you place one of your songs and they're into it, great, we'll keep doing it. And when they waver a little bit, then we'll go play something from the 30s. We'll play Sunny Side of the Street real slow. Mm -hmm. And draw them in and then hit them over the head with, with one of our things again. And what I started to notice is people would stand in the line to meet you after the concert and they would and they would say things like, oh, I sure did like when y'all did that blues, or I really did like the St. Louis blues. And what they're telling you is, yeah, do more like that. So all that other shit y'all were doing, okay, whatever that was. Yeah, I guess y'all like it, but, you know, I'll come mm -hmm. back and check you out because you played one thing that I like. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's one of these things that as you get older, you, you understand. I mean, you can... You know, because there are guys that don't do that. I mean, Chick doesn't do it. Keith Jarrett didn't really. Well, he did play a bunch of standards. He did it after a while. You know, they play with Miles, man. You know what I mean? It's like when you play with Miles, you that's a whole different thing. People mm -hmm. react to you differently if you were part of the, you know, a principal player in the Miles Davis 
fraternity. But in our times, in the modern times, and the stuff we're dealing with, and audiences, when you when you are lucky enough to have normal audiences come to your shows, because I mean, some some concerts is like guitar player shows up and it's like seventy five percent guitar players. Then I mean, it's just nerd away. I mean, if that's it's it's really hard to sustain that audience a long period of time. There are exceptions to that rule, but you you have to find a way to like you know bridge that chasm and the solution is never to have people who work hard for a living going to take a harmony class to figure out what the hell we're doing so we do things <laughs> for us and then we've learned how to do things for the audience and all of that is centered around just having a regular kind of uh, uh, understanding a social understanding of people which growing up in New Orleans I've always kind of had that that anyway so, you know, we laugh a lot on stage. We, we're like some four fools on the stage. We make fun of each other. We make mistakes. We laugh. Audiences love seeing that because people, audiences, with the exception of uh, Germany, are like the old Austro-Hungarian Empire. So it would be like Germany, the Czech Republic, Hungary, uh, like Latvia. Like when you, in Poland, you play in those places, they actually hear the music and they hear the energy. But in most places, I mean, people hear with their eyes, which is why in the United States, the operative verb for concert attendance is see, not hear. All your friends say, I can't wait to see you tonight. They don't say can't wait to hear you tonight. Uh, it's not an accident. And then some people say, oh, that's just what we say. No, it's not. I mean, it's, it's a thing. I mean, so people notice you. You say, why do you guys wear suits? I say, because people notice, you know? Sometimes you guys look like you're not serious. Well, we're, we're serious when we play, but when we're not playing, people notice. They like that. They like seeing musicians that look like they enjoy themselves by each other mm -hmm. and enjoy playing music. And we just happen to do that. It's not an act. I mean, we do enjoy hanging around each other. We do, a, we, you know, like in this, in this crazy stuff, we wind up doing a Zoom call once every couple of weeks. And then we're on the phone, for, we're on the Zoom for two hours, just talking trash. I mean, we, we get along really well and that's great.